everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. In today's video, I'm going to bring you some swatches from Manny MUA's new Lunar Beauty Collection. This palette is called Life is a Drag. I wonder what it's about. I already took the palette out of the box, but it comes in a box like this. Look, it's all reflective. Life's a drag. <laughs> and this is the palette. Ooh, look at that. That's cute. And it's all holographic ir iridescence and stuff. It also came with this fun little card. Look, there's my season nine sisters. There's Shea Coulee and Pheromone. And this girl, Elisa Ashley. And there's me right there in the center right here. You see, that's me with dark hair. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started, all right? I'm gonna show off some of this new glamorous palette that is just themed after drag. What a wonderful topic. Let's take my gloves off, there we go. Let's show off the colors. This is what the inside of the palette looks like. A little brush fell out. Okay, a little brush that comes with it. Look at all those fun colors. I never actually use the brushes that ever come with the palettes, but we'll see. Ah, it's pretty soft. I dig it. It's better than most brushes, so, you know, A plus for that, honey. And it has a little mirror that says, be a queen on it. Okay, so I'm gonna do an eye look for you guys today. And using some of the colors in this palette, we're gonna create something fun and draggy. And what I like about this palette is that a lot of the names are named after drag lingos. Like this one I'm gonna cut my crease with first, it's called Mug, which is what drag queens use to describe their face. And I like the pigment payoff so far. It's going off very, very deep, which I like, because normally when I cut creases or put makeup on my eyes, I have to go through over and over again with the one I usually do. I have to go over at least four times where I get some kind of pigment payoff, which I'm not having a problem here. There we go. She's cut. Now, let's go through with the white and we are going to create a more solid crease. We have like a gesso canvas. In hindsight, I probably should have put the eyeliner on last, but I've gone on camera now without eyebrows, without hair, without wigs. Sometimes I just want to look pretty when you guys see me, okay? And a little bit on my black eyeliner, which is fine because I brought my eyeliners with me so I can touch up. Right now I'm just gonna set it. But you know, if it gets a little messy, that's fine. That's kind of how drag is. The color I'm gonna use to set it is called Cake Face. It's this white color. And for those of you who wonder what Cake Face means, in drag lingo, Cake Face is when you wear too much makeup and you have it all packed on. Like Betty Davis and whatever happened to Baby Jane, that would be Cake Face. Like she doesn't take it off, she just keeps adding to it. Use the clean brush that came with and just brush away some of the excess. Now I have to say, I really like the concept of this palette and the fact that it celebrates drag the way that it does. Because coming up in the drag scene, not a whole lot of makeup companies ever really embraced it. The only ones I could really think of were MAC. They would have RuPaul in their campaign sometime. But not a whole lot of makeup brands ever capitalized on the fact that drag queens use their stuff. It's really nice to see these new companies coming out and supporting us and supporting the work that we do. Shout out to Sugar Pale. <laughs> and now the color that I'm going to use next is very near and dear to my heart. It's called Campy. It's this yellow one. Because many would describe my drag style as a bit campy. Campy, for those of you who don't know what that is, campy drag is a terminology for a kind of drag that is more over the top, more goofy, sometimes a little bit more on the comedic side or bad taste. It doesn't take itself too seriously or it takes itself too seriously in the name of comedy. Holy crap, that's actually really good. For a yellow eyeshadow, I'm really impressed. Wow, that's actually really good. <laughs> A little bit with cake base again and go into the inner corner. Now I've seen a lot of hearsay with the palette, especially with this palette's release, with the campaigns that were used for it or some of the makeup that people do for it, claiming that it's not drag enough, which is the silliest thing I've ever heard, honestly. Anyone that knows anything about drag knows that any kind of drag is valid and there's no way you can really put it in a box and say, this is a certain way you do your makeup. Either it's exaggerated or it's not. Like if you take certain drag artists like Barla Jean Merman, her makeup is usually softer and a lot more feminine, a lot more focused on the female impersonation aspect of drag. So when people go about putting others down and saying your makeup isn't drag enough, what does that really even mean? All it really means is that it doesn't fit the little box that I live inside. You can't just put drag in a box like that. It's everything, honestly. Drag is whatever you want it to be as long as you believe in it. Now the color I'm going with now is called Kai Kai. 
It is this bright pink color. I'm gonna use it here on my outside because I'm feeling very tropical today, so I wanna be very, very warm and colorful. I just had to get that off my chest. That really bothered me because there's been a lot of negativity being passed around about this palette. And you gotta put that to rest, honestly. I think it's wonderful that somebody actually is noticing drag and wanting to make us the faces of their campaign or even so far, going so far as to make a palette based around what it is to be a drag queen. Because I remember a time back in the 90s when nobody wanted anything to do with drag, and then all of a sudden a few movies came out and it's in all the ad campaigns and all the commercials. And then like that, they saw they weren't getting as much money out of it and they just got rid of it and put a lot of drag queens out of work and nobody wanted anything to do with drag. And thankfully, RuPaul's Drag Race came around and revived everyone's interest, and now it's all over the place again. And I don't want to see drag go away. I want us to keep going further, because we've come so far now. And the fact that we have palettes now being based off of what we do, that is truly magical to me. Use this clean brush and just soften that edge. All right, now that I got all that done, I'm gonna clean up my eyeliner. Because trust me, it's bothering me too. You guys know me, you guys know I'm relatable. I honestly am not afraid to be on camera looking a little foolish because I know in the end, the result will be exactly what I wanted most of the time. And especially with drag, you can't be afraid to just keep adding to it. Half the time, that's when you get the best results. It's looking very mother of a solid gold dancer right now, which I'm actually in love with. It suits this fabric. Let's go on the bottom now. I wonder how blue is going to look. I'm going to try it. Some, I'm going to try something different. Let's try blue under the eyelid. And the color I'm going to go in with is Kiki. Get a little bit of that. A Kiki is a party for calming all your nerves. For those of you who are Scissor Sisters fans, it is a term that was started in the drag ball culture. If you watch films like Paris is Burning, you can learn a little bit more about that. The likes of Pepper La Beja and the extravaganzas, the Duprees, the Saint Laurent. Fabulous, fabulous houses of not only queens, but vogueurs and people that just love to walk the runway and show off their face. I have to say, I love that you even brought in ball culture into this. A lot of these names have a lot to do with different terminologies and drag in all aspects of it, from ball culture to camp, to even face, body, pageants. It celebrates all cultures of drag. All right, now I'm gonna go with this color called Fishy. It's a little deeper. And Fishy is another word that was born out of ball culture. It means you walk this runway and you look like a woman. You can go outside right now and get you a man. You can go out in public and not get clocked. That was what Fishy means. All right, and I just did that in the middle so it can look like it's fading out. Now I'm gonna go back in with my black and just deepen that up a bit more and clean it up. All right, I'm gonna add to the brow bone as well. I'll go back in with Cake Face, which is the white. And just highlight under the brow. <laughs> She's 80s, baby. <laughs> I love it. All right, with Cake Face again, I'm just gonna go in the inner corners as well. And brighten that up a bit, open my eye up some more. Now it's time to glow up my face. I'm gonna use the color Legendary here. Get a little bit of that on my brush. And let's highlight our cheek. Get a little more. There she is. Now I'm gonna tip the nose. And with the excess, I'm gonna go on my bridge as well. And there she is. Now I'm gonna put some extra on my shoulder. And now to amp this look up even more, the best finishing touch is always eyelashes and jewels. So, I'm going to use my eyelashes I recently just built in my last video, and we're gonna put those on my face. And some of you out there have been asking me how I put my eyelashes on, and I have to say, I see this over and over and over again, the best way to put on eyelashes for drag is to have lots and lots of eyeliner, because then you don't have to actually put it on your actual lash line. 
because that's how you get like that weird wonky lash. Especially if the eyelash is too big for your face. You have to cut it and trim it. I always put it on at an angle. So it starts low here and goes upward. And if you see that white on the eyelash, don't worry, it dries clear. I can't stress that enough. Take that jewel dipped in duo. And just place it on your eye. All right, and some bottom lashes. All right, this is the look. Now I'm just gonna swatch the colors for you and go down the line name by name, okay? Be right back. Okay, so we have the white color, which is called Cake Face. We have this tan color called Sickening, which would be a good transition shade. We have Hunty right here, also a good transition shade. We have Beat, Campy, Pageant Queen, Kiki, Fishy, Snatched, Kai Kai, Legendary, Mug, Trade, and Shady, which is my favorite color. <laughs> and I'm back. This is the final result. I have to say, I actually really, really like this palette. And hashtag not sponsored the house. And I have to say, it gives you a very good color variety for the price. And I don't know the price because I didn't buy it. My boyfriend bought it for me. <laughs> Maybe you should have them do it for you. Now, I have to say, it is James Mansfield approved. I actually really, really like this palette. And like I it before, like, I love anything that celebrates drag, no matter what. If it puts a positive spin on drag in the media, I'm all for it because the more support we get, the more seriously people take our art form. So thank you, Manny, anyway, for creating this wonderful palette and for celebrating our art form. Now, I will be in Provincetown for the next three months doing my one-woman show, Hersery with Madam. So I won't be updating as I usually do, but if you have suggestions, fling them my way because I'd love to hear what you guys want to see next. And I'll be sure to work on it when I come back after my three-month stint in Provincetown is done. And if you want to buy tickets to my one-woman show in Provincetown, it is at the Pilgrim House. It'll be going from June 15th all the way to September 3rd. I'll have tickets linked down below. And until next time, bye! Click here and see how I create eyelashes. Or see me glued on a wig using Got To Be Glue. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, my squeaks will haunt your dreams when you least expect it.